guys, welcome to another day of our shed build. If this is your first time watching, welcome. Uh, so we are building a two-story Japanese-style shed, and we are about a month into it. Yep. And last time we painted the front and sides of the building, we put up siding on the back of the building and painted that. And it looks good. Um, so what's up next? Next is the soffits, which is involved. It's a very involved process. <laughs> so what's coming up here? So we have to. So we have cedar soffits that we're doing, and a soffit is the board that goes underneath the eave of a building, right? Yep, and we're kind of making our own. So we right. actually have cedar fence pickets that we're going to put a tongue and groove on and then oil those. And tongue then, oil. Tongue oil, and then install them. Yeah. Uh, so it's actually pretty involved and it's pretty high up i know it's only a 15 foot shed but it still is pretty high up there yeah and i'm curious to see how long it takes for that oil to kind of soak in enough yeah. for us to install it i know you're supposed to wait a bit of time well and i should say while we have a lot of these tools we haven't used them much so like there's we're going to use a tongue and groove bit for the routing table uh we it's going to be our first time using that uh in this way this many times i've used it before on very minor <laughs> projects uh, so so that's going to be more uh, of like a production and bonus because we're doing tongue and groove. That means we'll be able to nail it or screw it in using the tongue and grooves through those rather than through like face nailing. It. Yes. Uh, so that should really make it a lot better. Yeah, I think that'll make us happy. We were worried about the nails kind of being seen from so far away, like yeah. 15 feet up in the air. But, you know, um, so that's still a lot to do. So we better get going. All right. I'm giving you the good side facing up, so you can just don't even have to consider what you're doing. You're just and I only need to the front side, right? Or do I need to play both? I think just the front side. Okay. That's why I was saying I'm giving them you to your front top side. Wait. All right, and I'm doing the rough cut. I'm not doing the. I'm doing 96 in, 96, 96 cuts per inch instead of 179, just because it's twice the speed. Well, look at this one. Look how purple this is. That's crazy. Look. That's so weird. Look at it compared to these other ones. It probably got dyed. I don't know what's going on. I mean, it, cedars. You think they're dying this red? No. The good woods? Like, this is the normal cedar color. This set, uh, this like reddish pink, but that's, that's weird. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is start planting our cedar. So this is the cedar here. We have much more than this. These are just some of the boards Anna's picked out. She's picking more right now. Um, and so uh, this is the DeWalt 735X. I'll link to it in the description. It's our planer that we use. It's a really good planer. It's about as nice as you can get before you get to really nice ones where it's several thousand dollars. Uh, it does have a 13 inch wide capacity and can go up and down a fair amount. Um, so what I'm gonna try to do is plane down uh, this cedar so that it's just thinner than it is right now. I just wanna plane off just the rough surface of it so that it's smooth. Uh, the smooth does a few things. First, we like the look better of the smooth cedar. Uh, second, it lets it go through uh, the router table. It lets it go through there easier as well. And it makes it a consistent thickness. And the consistent thickness between all the boards is super important so that the tongue and groove actually line up when we're putting it in. Because um, we're making our own tongue and groove in just a little bit. So that's the first thing I have to do. Quick notes about it. Uh, when you're using a planer, I mean, it's it's pretty easy. I put on these out feed and in feed tables. The other bit is to wear ear protection. Uh, planer is extremely loud if you've never used one. So always be sure to wear ear protection when you're near it, in my opinion. All right, so I better get going. Okay. 
so the first few passes are gonna be a little bit like not take much off because I'm trying to get it right. So that's the one that takes the longest. Then once I have it going, I'll be able to push them all through. More boards, more boards, okay. Okay, so I've gotten it pretty close. So I need to go just a little bit further and you can kind of see it where it's smooth. And then right here, it's a little rough. I don't know if that comes off in the camera or not, but it's a little rough here where it's a little smooth. So I just need to go just barely a little bit more. And then I should be in business and be able to do all, all from there. I'm gonna move the camera though, cause uh, the shaving's going right in this camera. So I'm gonna move the direction that you're seeing us. So it's really good that we were planning these down. I've already encountered some that were too thick. We're only about uh, 10, in 10 boards in, and some uh, it just wouldn't quite fit into the planer, whereas other ones it goes pretty easily because they are the right thickness. Uh, had we not done this, had we just left them, if they're inconsistent th thicknesses, this would have been a major issue when we got to do with the tongue and groove, at least on the back side or whichever side is the side that was up. Uh, it would have ended up being a major issue with having them line up later. Uh, so I'm really glad we're doing this and we have this whole stack still to go. So this is the same manufacturer, but look at how thick this is. Like, I didn't think I would visually be able to see this, but look, look at the difference there in thickness between the two of these. No wonder we were having trouble getting some of these through the planer. Like, that's crazy. And also this, they're sitting on the ground and this one is a... Uh, one significantly taller. A quarter inch wider. I mean, in this case, taller because they're on their edge, but look at that con inconsistency too. So we're going to have to take a closer look at all of these. Yeah, well, the width, as far as that goes, the, the width doesn't matter as much because we can, uh, we, just have to make sure we just make sure they're tongue and groove. That doesn't matter as much, but the thickness does matter. Yeah. Well, I'm going to kick this one out because it's so ridiculous. All right. I mean, yeah. I'm sure people... We have hundreds. We'll kick it out. I know. I'm sure pe these are for, supposed to be for fences. I'm sure most people don't care. Yeah. It doesn't really matter, so. Okay. Hey, Anna. Yes. So people are going to ask us why we did these pickets instead of real cedar boards. Because we're cheap. Like, it's like, guys, it's like a quarter of the price. Actually, I didn't even look at the price. I just went straight to the cedar pickets. No, it's, so. so we didn't need the thickness. We didn't need an inch thickness anyway. And then uh, this is like 2 to $3 a board, whereas the same length would have been like $16 a board for cedar. Yeah. So, and we can process them ourselves with by putting the tongue and groove in there. So why not? Yeah. 
Hey guys, we're starting to question if the cedar is actually cedar. We're thinking some of it might be pine. All right, so I just wanted to show a difference between pine and cedar looking ones. I mean, they could both be cedar, but this one here, this graining, that looks really similar to pine. Uh, if anybody is watching this and you know the differences, please let me know. I mean, the coloring of it could be cedar, but man, that looks like pine on the left, whereas the one on the right looks very much more like cedar and how cedar's knotting kind of kind of is traditionally done. I mean, look at that. Even that board on the left, that's a clear board. There's no knots at all, which is really rare for cedar. Uh, you normally have to pay a whole lot for that. So I'm going to guess that the one on the left here that they have labeled as cedar is actually pine. Um, and in fact, here's another one here too. Look at that. That one's also pine. The two on the left, the oh, everything about it yells, I'm pine. Yeah, I don't know. Like this without the red looks like pine. They might be dyeing it. So there's other ones with purple on it where they're definitely dyeing it. I don't know. And, then and this looks like pine up here, but then the pink says cedar. I bet you they're dyeing it. Look, pull around the on the other corner. There's a pink one right there. They pull that out here. So I think they're putting the dye on it to make it look, quote, more like cedar. Look how purple that's. I've never seen cedar look this. Purple. I'm not saying that it's not treated. It could be treated pine. Uh, those are probably more likely to be cedar with their knotting. But uh, those two to have clear cedar well, that's to that look like pine. There's no way it's pine. That That's probably cedar in your hand. I have no idea. Yeah. We're suspicious. Should we pass it to the planer and just see, like, yeah, that's totally done. Like, yeah, I'm curious to see what this ends up looking like through the planer to see if it's, um, if it, if it just planes off its color. If it's just, is this, like, something that happened because of the sun? Or you would think that the sun would bleach it out and make it less pinkish. So you're right here. This looks like this is, it was stacked. It looks like a board was stacked on top of this one and the sun bleached it out. And so maybe this is the real color. I don't know. Let's pass it to the planer and see. We can pass those. But the other ones that I was saying are pine, we're taking those out. Okay, yeah, they can go in the reject file. Yeah. Hey. Hey. All right, so we've been putting stuff through the planer. Uh, what's going on? Uh, we're curious to see what this one will look like when we put it through the planer because it's such a weird color. It's like this purpley blue color, whereas cedar is normally this pink color with a little bit of white. So... I mean, with this could be the natural color of it because it looks like there's maybe this is where a board was sitting on top and this is sun bleaching. I think it's dyed. I <laughs> think it's dyed. I'm pretty sure it's dyed. I think that's what they're trying to do is make it look more like red cedar. Because this isn't red cedar. Like none of the cedar is supposed to be western red cedar. It's just cedar. Well, we don't know what species of cedar, just as cedar pigments. Yeah, that's true. It could be anything. So that's weird. So I'm very curious to see what this will end up looking like. All right, let's give it a try? try. Yeah. All right. All right, so here's that pink board. Want to compare it to one of these other ones? It's totally dyed. Hundred percent dye. That weird purple color, because yeah, now it's, it's still coming through. It's a dye. I mean, normally you wouldn't plain these because these are just cedar pickets. You're supposed to just install them. You can see how it's even splotchy. That came out at least more consistent with the other ones. All right, so show me the cedar. This isn't even the thickest part, but look at all that. Yeah, it's like so much. Okay, you've got sawdust all over you. <laughs> I, I do have a bit. Uh, you don't have much on you at all. I was over there. Okay. <laughs> um, so, guys, we just thought we'd do a quick update here of where we are. So, we've, we have planed down about 40 of these uh, cedar boards now. Uh, and so far, it's gone okay. Yeah, I think the boards themselves look really nice, just the plane down versus the rough side. Yeah, it, it does look a lot better than rough, the smooth, at least in person. it's It looks a lot better. But uh, we did have some problems pushing some through, though. Yeah, and some were thicker than others. I mean, it's they're fence boards, so they're meant to be just, I mean, they're rough. 
texture, but also yeah. they're fence boards that usually wouldn't matter for anyone. We're using these for a different purpose. Bad news is, is that we bought a, a, a bunch of extra cedar pickets and then, um, you know, we can have to pick and choose from right. um, aesthetically. But then also we can always return the ones that we, uh, you know, if even they have problems like cracks or weird, like weird things going on with them, right. we can return them and purchase more if we need to. So we're picking the pickets. Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, now next up, what are we doing? Next up is we're going to route uh, tongue and groove into those boards. And I didn't tell you this earlier, but uh, I was looking at the bit that we got, and yeah. it looks like it may not, it may be too wide for these boards. I I was actually kind of thinking about that. I, I didn't look at the bit itself, but I just thought I was, I thought about it. But then I was like, oh no, we probably bought the right bit. Well, I I did. I bought the bit that's appropriate. Okay. However, it, we might need a different bit for the, these. Are awfully thin now. Um, and so I think what we're going to have to do is uh, either get a different bit or it just turns into a uh, shiplap instead of tongue and groove. That's also fine. That yeah. way, if there's expansion and contraction, it, you know, it just... They're... Except for, well, it might be fine, but you would still, I think then you'd have to nail it on the face, though. Face nailing, potentially. Probably. Uh, let's go find out. So that's okay. the next thing. All right, let's go get the router's table. All right. So, quick update. So, I have our Cowood bit, bit set. If you've never heard of Cowood, neither had I. I'll link to it in the description. You can go check it out yourself if you'd like. Uh, it was just on Amazon. Uh, so, here is... This is the groove bit that it would be cutting. And it says one quarter inch. And so, I think we're going to be okay. It's going to be a very thin side on each side. But we can at least try it on one board or two boards. And see what we think uh, and make sure that it's going to work uh the tongue side of the tongue and groove is definitely wider than the board itself yeah it's definitely wider than the board itself but it, that's okay because we're just trying to get the tongue out of it which is thinner anyway if you're wondering i went with the co-wood set instead of like bosch or one of the ones i normally would go with uh because first off price again we're trying to keep this within reason of price and bits can get expensive really fast I did check out bits and bits just to make sure. Uh, but they get expensive really fast. And so I just went with a little cheap guy. Because we're cutting, we're going into cedar. It's an extremely soft wood. It's almost like going into paper. I mean, it's soft. And so uh, I'm not too concerned about if these bits are sharp enough or if they give out. Like, they shouldn't have a problem with this. When I work with Walnut or Sapili or Ipe or uh, Sippo, that's wood where I want really good bits. Uh, but for cedar, this should work just fine. So it's easier to adjust this here than once it's in there. Because once it's in there, I'm fighting gravity. Now, the problem we could have is if this shifts at all. Why would it shift? Gravity? Vibrations? There. Oh, oh, this is going to eat away at my little fence here. You think so? Do you want to put a sacrificial fence on there? Hopefully, if these are all the same thickness. Not quite in the center. I could go a little higher with it. But, I mean... Barely. I think it's good. I think I'm going to call it as good. Okay, I just wanted to say... Uh, so, first off, we're wearing the masks because uh, this puts a whole lot of sawdust, barely fine sawdust in the air. Um, and then uh, this... So, sorry with this board because it's not the best board. Okay, so how well did that go? Uh, well, that was a test. So, I mean, clearly the bit wasn't high enough. When I tested out the other piece of what it was, either it went down, which I don't think it was consistent, 
Uh, but clearly I just need to raise it a little bit. Um, this will be, you know, one of the boards in the back or worst case, we can turn it into a furring strips. So it just started chipping out because it was too close. Yeah, it was too close, way too close. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna try again. Is that working? No, too high. Okay. Too low. That's good. How's that look? I mean, it's tongue and groove. All right, let me get the real boards. All right. So there we go. So this is the first piece done, and we did suicide down. It's a little bit thicker of a tongue on the front than the back, which is fine by me. Um, that should work. Yeah, you think this is gonna work? Hopefully so. So this is what you get for having a relatively inexpensive router. Uh, I put my less expensive, I have a nicer router, but I put the less expensive one on the table saw. Uh, router table? Yeah, sorry, router table. I put it in here, but just because this is the permanent one that's attached to this. Um, I guess just keep in mind, this isn't fine woodworking, this is just carpentry. Well, what's happening is it keeps it's slipping. So yeah, the housing, before, yeah. the housing is swimming, so it's sinking. Hey guys, so we wanted to do an update about uh, what was happening and what we decided to do. Yep, so turns out routing a tongue and groove just isn't going to work for at, these boards. At least not with cedar. Yeah, these are the, the, the c this cedar is too thin for the router bit we had. We got the r most appropriate router bit and it just... It's too soft of a wood, it was, so it was blowing out. Um, and so even we had a little bit of router drift where the router was basically falling slowly down, which means it just wasn't tight enough. So we fixed that, but even after we fixed that, we still had like, this is a perfectly one eighth on each side groove here. And uh, it started, it just blew it out. It just has chips all the way up and down. And that's just gonna be frustrating. And I don't wanna like ruin like half of our material cause it's kind of unpredictable when that's happening. Some pieces were fine and some others just completely blew out and it's no, not good. Right, and while the cedar isn't the most expensive cedar, it is just like dog fence pickets is what it's called or something, or yep. dog eared fence pickets. Uh, but it's still not cheap, and so we don't want to waste it. Uh, so new plan is what? Uh, shiplap. <laughs> the ever popular shiplap. So instead of having an eighth of an inch groove on each side of the board, it will be now more like 50-50. So it'll have more material there for hopefully for it to not have less of a chance to like chip out. Right, to blow out. And uh, the main thing uh, with the shiplap, so there is like a shiplap look where like you leave the revealed like negative area mm -hmm. or that goes in. I have no intention of that. Like I'm gonna have them an eighth of an inch apart. And in fact, the uh, shiplap that we're planning on cutting is gonna be a little bit shallower, like maybe only a quarter of an inch overlap, uh, just because we don't really love the shiplap look, which I know is like heresy. But uh, Honestly, it should look exactly like tongue and groove, except the fact now that we have to face nail it, tongue and groove, you could kind of nail or screw into the tongue yeah. and hide all your fasteners. Whereas now this, we're just gonna have to face nail, which is a little unfortunate, but Hopefully the pin nails will be small enough that we won't really notice them. Yeah. And who knows? Maybe we do like the shiplock look where it goes down and back up and down and back up. Who knows? We'll, f we'll find out. <laughs> All right. So uh, let's do it. All right. Woody, do you need help? Yeah, I need your help. Okay. I can't do it. There you try. Okay. And what, am I that going right now? Yeah, it is. Okay. So guys, we, we tightened this so that the router was tighter, but now I can't loosen it myself. You want me to undo the flap? Yeah, I did the flap. Yeah. Oh my gosh, dude. It's it's pretty hard. Owie. Here we go. No, I got it. It's going. It's going. Now. Okay. Okay. I know that. It's a little. So I'm doing laser eyes. <laughs> so laser eyes. Right, right there. Right there. Okay. This is super pre precise woodworking. There you go. You know what's funny? 
Yeah. I use the sprouter for all our walnut, and I use the sprouter for the oak as well. I'm covered in sawdust. I am covered in sawdust. <laughs> So all that we've done is just reduce it some, you know, like about an eighth of an inch. See? So now, well, that might not actually be enough now. So that's going to be, yeah, it's about a quarter. Let's, let's just do one and find out how we like it. It's okay. It's a bit, as long as it's the same one time. There, that goes a little bit further too. All right, so how thick is that? So when I put it here, it is right at a quarter of an inch, which is exactly what we want. Good. Okay, so that seems to have done it. What we were having an issue with, uh, we were trying to make it consistent. So even with this, it still wasn't very consistent on the thickness. We thought it might be drifting again, uh, but really it's just the cedar boards are not flat. Uh, and so normally you would have milled these cedar boards on a, what is it, not a planer, a uh, jointer first. And then you would have pushed them through. But again, this is just carpentry and we don't have the material to push this through a jointer anyway. Uh, so uh, I put a board on there that is holding it down and that seemed to fix it. Okay, so this is the first piece done. Uh, you can see here it's got the groove on this side and here's the smooth side and it's got a groove on the smooth face. Uh, so now I can make a second one. I was gonna say that they aren't really lining up perfectly and we might need to raise the bit. When I push these though, they're really close. And that's actually good. They're just not very consistent. I mean, if we're taking out more than half of the of the area, then this is, this becomes a non-issue. So I think we should raise it just a hair. Get there. So we just raised the router bit just a hair because it wasn't quite halfway through. So now what I'm hoping for, but this is where you haven't actually looked. Aha, there. Now it's actually flat across and that becomes like a real non-issue. Yeah, it's a lot better. But yeah, oh, if I did the ship lap, if we wanted the ship lap look, like that's the ship lap look there is like, you know, having like the gap on to purpose. And so this is just, so they lap over each other. Right. That's, and, we will probably butt them semi-tight to each other, enough for expansion and contraction, but not enough to like do that reveal right there. Well, success so far. Yeah. Three done. Three done. How many do we need for the back? Like five and we can put some up. Just saying no, five. I mean, yeah, we, we, Maybe we, a little bit more. we could just like process enough for the back and then yeah. put them up there and see, yes, this is working. Yeah, that's kind of what I want to do. Instead everything. of doing all of them, I want to do a few. Let's put some tongue oil on them and then see if it's any good uh, before we just do everything. Because what if we're wrong? So, <laughs> yeah, there's no instructions or guides here. So we're making it up and uh, I want to make sure it's going to work and look OK. Uh, we'll have to get out the pen nailer and other stuff, too, and just see. Like, does this work or does it hold, you know? Like, that's the other question, is will it hold on to uh, the actual soft? I think it's gonna be fine. Should be. I think it's gonna work. how big of a nail we use. Hey, what you doing? Uh, well, this didn't quite get this little veneer's width of stuff off, so I'm just trying to clean it up a little bit. So you, yeah. you can see here, like this was left. It's just like this almost like paper thin flap that didn't right. quite. It's because we raised it just a little bit. Mm 
Yeah, there you go. Looks pretty. Okay. Is that enough space, or do you think we really have to miter them? I think we might have to miter. I can. Yeah, has not enough space there. It's only the one corner that would be attached, so I think we're going to have to miter them. I think mitering is probably the way to go. Oh, feathering would have been nice, but mitering will look good, too. Okay. And then we just have to decide if the miter, do we want to have a tons of groove on it or whatever, like a, whatever we're doing now, or do we want to just have them butt up against each other? It's already painted black. I don't know if you'll see it. Yeah, maybe just have them butt up against each other. Sure would make my life a lot easier. Uh, yeah. routing, the, routing end grade is notoriously hard to do. It, it likes to blow out. So there you go. I think it'll look good, though. And honestly, what we're going to have to do here is get some of these up here and just put them on until we run out. The last one's going to have to be put through the table saw. <laughs> I just get you a measuring tape. Here's two boards. It's at least three. Three and something. Three full ones, yeah. And then something for the fifth one. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Never be using ugly boards here because this is the back. How's rolling compared to using the brush? I think a little better. So the brush, it was just taking up so much, so much oil that, uh, I mean, it looks really pretty. But I was concerned about how much oil it's going to use. So what's going to go on here? I need you to go bring me uh -huh. the uh, corner board, one of the corner boards. Yep. I'm going to put it up here. You're going to look and tell me where the half, where the mark is, right? Uh-huh. I'm going to mark it where we need to cut it down here. Yep. You're going to go cut it. And then install. And then you're going to bring it back and we're going to install it. And then we'll go to the next board. Got it. Because that way we're not making mistakes. So you got to tell me if I go forward or backwards. Actually, this is good. It lands. Looks good. Right there. There, right? Yep. How visible are these nails down there? I can see them. So I think what we should do for the front, if we have time to, like later, is go to the store and get the smaller gauge nails that are appropriate. So it turns out it is good that we did that we're doing the tongue groove. Look at this spacing. Space is way out here and is nearly touching on on the other side. So that type of bowing. So it really does you kinda can see between the boards. Yeah, it's really not straight at all. I should start to be giving you an idea of what it'll look like. Yeah, let's now we just need one more cut at a forty five. I'll put it up here. If we can measure where it goes, cut it, and install it. All right, let's do it. Right about there, right? Yeah, you're locked in. It looks it yeah. looks about right. It's really close. Yeah. About an eighth of an inch or so, but it really needs about a quarter inch. Hey, so what are you doing? So I'm setting up the track saw for where it was uh, not quite fitting. I marked it. And then I'm going to hopefully, I'm hopefully overcutting by just a little bit. going. We're good. We're sure good. Yep. Thirty-nine and five eight. Looks good. One side is done. 
honestly, it looks pretty okay. I mean, I know that this hits here, but this is the backside. And we could do the faux rafters that would go over this anyway. Oh, I don't think we need to do it on the back, but uh, that's not bad looking at all. Honestly, it's okay. These nails are pretty, pretty obvious at 16 gauge. So I think we do need to go to an 18 gauge. Hey. Hey. So what are we doing next? Uh, we are disassembling that scaffolding that you're standing on and moving it right here so we can do this other side. Okay. And that's that side there. That's looking good. This is our new scaffolding location. So this rough side is much more absorby than the smooth side. What are you putting on there? This is tongue oil and doesn't seem to go very far right? On the plain side, it is a lot better. It goes on a lot easier. I think for all the, the front ones, we should plane both sides. Yeah, I think so. So what's nice here is that uh, it feels like a lot of progress really fast because it's so like short of a distance. Like, look at this. I could put this board on and we're nearly done. That's all it takes. There. Look how much progress that is. Now, if I wasn't fighting gravity, right. this would be a lot easier. We'll, we'll use the other nailer on the side. Yeah, a lighter nailer would definitely help. Hey, that looks great. Fits all the way down. And it just snugly spits right around this, which is great. All right, so here's a closer look at what we're doing here for the soffit. So we have this diagonal piece so that our soffit pieces have something to nail to right there. And then that other piece that's kind of half painted is another nailer board for the soffit to attach to on that side. Your last piece right here. Okay, one last piece. Okay, you got it. <laughs> okay, so that's it for the soffits on the back side of the building. Next time, we'll continue with the front and sides. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe.